Hi Photoshop. Hi Photoshop. So I just want to play around with the live settings on YouTube and see how it works. And uh, while I'm doing that, I thought I would share a good tip with you. Um, so it's how to incrementally, how to enter. Okay, I'm really bad at uh, English, as you know, but it's how to incrementally um, using effects in Photoshop. So uh, I got this question here in how to bend an image in Photoshop, Inception Effect. We can see the uh, shadow is incrementally getting larger and larger, close to the edge, and that's done with the Irish blur. And how would you achieve this effect if you didn't have Photoshop CC uh, and up? Uh, you wouldn't do the, this feature, but wasn't possible in the Photoshop CS6 and below. So how would you go ahead and do that? So let's go in Photoshop here, and I've made just a normal rectangle. And I will show you how to do it in Photoshop CC and up. Uh, and you should really get that version because it is awesome. So how would you go ahead and create a realistic shadow in CC? And how would you do it below, so CS6, CS6 and below? Let me just show you. So I will duplicate these, this rectangle here. And then I will rasterize it. So right click on it and press rasterize layer. I'll just move it out so you can see what I'm doing. Then press Control U and bring the lightness all the way down to make it black as a shadow. You know what? Actually, I should have. I'm just only doing that because I, I don't need it to be rasterizing writing just yet. Let me just start out by pressing Control T and then select Distort. And then I'm going to distort it if it was like a shadow of the box. So make it a little bit longer. Let's say that this is the shadow of the box. Press OK. All right, now I want to rasterize it. Rasterize layer and make it black. And we'll do this two times, one with CC. So I'll just duplicate that and call that shadows with CC. And call this shadows below CC. All right, so how would you do it with CC? Well, just go to Filter, the Blur Gallery, the Tilt Shift Blur, and now you can see how we can increase, uh, increase the uh, blur amount uh, incrementally. So let me just put that down here and say that the fade out should be happen from here to here. So as you can see, the sh shadow is now having zero blur here, zero blur here, and 100% blur here, and the 100% blur is 50. Uh, 15 pixels. All right, so that's looking partly realistic, except for that shadow here. I'm just grabbing the eraser tool here and deleting it. And maybe you know you would also. Uh, I'm just made a, a layer mask here. Maybe you'll also fade out some of the light so it's getting more blur and the uh, volume of the shadow is fading out as well. So here comes the trick. How do you do it? And uh, below CC, you don't have the blur gallery. Well, first of all, here comes the not exciting uh, tip. You have the blur tool, so you can always go in and use the blur tool here, and then blur, blur out a lot here in the, the end, and then less and less close, you'll get to the shape. So that's one possible one possibility with the blur tool. But I would say the real exciting thing comes in this method, because you can use this method for all filters, not only blur. So let me show how it is, how it's done. Get the last tool here, and have just undo. I just undid the other selection or blur, and um, I'm going to set the feather to 20 pixels, but that uh, that isn't nece uh, necessarily necessary. Sorry, my English is really bad. Um, all right, so you would go in. And then only take the tip of the shadow like so. Then go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'll just set the uh, radius amount of 2.5 pixels, like so. And then I will hold down Shift while using the lasso tool and draw in just draw the selection just a little bit bigger. And then I'll go ahead and uh, do the same effect as last time, and that was Gaussian Blur. And you just press Control F to do the same effect again. So Control F, more blur, and then adding Shift for the last tool to add in a bigger selection. And now we're just going to increase the selection 
So we're getting closer and closer to the edge, and we will get the same incrementing effects as we would in real life. And also, of course, adding a layer mask, paint out the end, so it's also getting less and less. Now, that's part, partly realistic, and this is totally doable with uh, all versions of Photoshop. OK, maybe not Photoshop version 3, but you know, all CS versions. So the interesting uh, thing with this effect comes that you can do it with all effects, so not only the blur. So let me just rasterize this uh, triangle. You can just rasterize with making a group on the layer by Control G and then merging it down on itself, pressing Control E. So now it's rasterized, as you can see. So we can also, I'll just select the top, do the same effect again, uh, the top of the square here, of course, and go to, let me see, what can I do? Go to Stylize, Wind, do the effect once, press OK, add in more, press Control F to do it again, and more, and more, and more, and more. And more. So now we created a gradually effect here in Photoshop. The wind is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, and just just for fun, let's do it again with I don't know noise, um, just to show that it's possible to do with all effects. So add in noise, okay? Uh, add in noise again and again and again. So I'm pressing. I'm creating the selection by holding down Shift, adding the selection, pressing Control F to do the, the last done effect. So what's happening is um, what you selected first will get the effect again and again and again and again. And what's out here will only have it a few times. So that's how the effect is being created. And that's how it's possible to do incrementingly effects in Photoshop in all version almost. Uh, and even create a realistic shadows with all the without the blur gallery uh, that we have that we got introduced in Photoshop CC um, so I want to apologize for my poor poor English it's alive and I'm not a native uh, speaking man but still hope you found this useful thank you for watching bye